It is Halloween today, so let's tackle something a little bit scary, differentiating ventricular tachycardia from SVT with a bundle branch block. This can be a really big challenge, and there are a couple of ECG features that should push us towards ventricular tachycardia. The first is that you'll often see an extreme right axis deviation in ventricular tachycardia. That means QRS down in one and in AVF. You're gonna see a dominant S wave in lead V6, and that's because all of the electricity in the left side of the heart is moving away from that lead. If you look at the RS portion of the QRS, it should be greater than 100 milliseconds in the precordial leads, and overall your QRS complex should be greater than 160 milliseconds. Now you can see a QRS greater than 160 milliseconds in a right bundle branch block as well, so to differentiate VTAC from just having a right bundle branch block, you're gonna look at lead V1, and you should either see no RSR prime morphology, or if there is an RSR prime, the left-sided rabbit ear is gonna be larger than the right-sided rabbit ear in ventricular tachycardia. All of these ECG changes are good to know from an academic standpoint, but in the clinical scenario, if you see a patient with a wide, regular tachycardia, you're gonna assume it's ventricular tachycardia every time and you're gonna treat it as ventricular tachycardia every time. That's the safest way to care for the patient in front of you. 